We have a question from Santiago. Recently came across the hybrid athlete concept. Uh, someone who is able to lift heavy and run far at the same time. And it is fascinating. What are your thoughts about it? And how could you structure a week of training to make that possible? Well, <laughs> Santiago, I mean, this is the holy grail of what we try to do in strength and conditioning. I mean, I want an athlete who can run a marathon and deadlift a thousand pounds. And, and good for me if I can do that. Uh, this is one of the reasons I'm such a big fan of the Olympic lifts is when I was Olympic lifting, um, I got a call at three in the morning from a, a woman I worked with. And it's a good thing she was attractive because I wouldn't have done it. And she was sort of in tears is that at six in the morning, they needed a 10th person for something called a centipede, which is a 10 person. You had to stay connected by a rope and run a 10 K. Well, and the joke of course is it was three in the morning, but don't worry. I'd gotten in it too. Um, and so I said, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. And, uh, you know, I, I think I, I don't remember if I went back to sleep, but I got up, you know, put on shoes, the best shoes I could find for running, and then uh, joined the centipede and ran a 10K race. And I was fine. These were all people who trained for running and then the guy who Olympic lifted. But the nice thing about Olympic lifting is it gives you a certain level of condition. So step one, I think, I think you need to do in the weight room full body movements. Uh, if you're a kettlebeller, I think it would be the snatch. Um, it'd be that armor building, you know, workout, the double clean, the press, the three front squats, the, the, that old standby. Um, but you have to do whole body workouts. When you do the Olympic lifts, snatch, clean and jerk, front squats, maybe some pressing, um, you get into a very odd kind of conditioning. Now, I just had a meet a couple of weeks ago and I've been doing presses and uh, hip thrusts and some other stuff because I wanted to, I just, I wanted to turn my engine off. I've had some personal issues. I wanted to turn my engine off for a few months, weeks. And one of the things I've noticed is that my condition has dropped. So the first thing I'd recommend is up to three days a week, anywhere from a half an hour to 45 minutes of whole body workouts. I see a hand go out in the back, yes. Can you do it with a standard push, pull, hinge, squat, loaded carry? Well, sure, you sure you could, and, and I have no issues with that. But you're going to have to get you have to wean yourself off the, the, the traditional bro workout of you know 85 different press variations, some curls, you know one eight squats. Forget the deadlift, you no know, no farmer walks. You're going to have to take it seriously to do whole body. And so if you do do push pull hinge squat loaded carry three days a week, use the workout generator. That's probably good. <sighs> one day. On the weekend, you're going to have to do something uh, we used to call it LSD, long, slow distance. That doesn't, you have to be careful about that word slow. It, it just basically doesn't mean you're not going to sprint, uh, uh, whatever you can do. Now, I think doing triathlons makes sense. In fact, we used to do a thing called the Dan John Triathlon. It was a joke, but uh, it was, uh, let's see if I can remember this. You had to swim a certain number of laps in the pool, and then we got on an extra cycle and did, had to go a certain distance on the exercise cycle. And then we went on a treadmill. Uh, this is Utah winter, you know, it doesn't, doesn't work great. And then you had to go so far on the treadmill and it was nothing huge. And we'd always just say, okay, today we're gonna do 20, uh, see, uh, in, in swimming, a length is this and a lap is that. So we're gonna do 20 laps in the pool. We're gonna do 10 miles on the exercise cycle and one mile on the treadmill and that's not very much but what was cool about it is you're kind of you know you're kind of racing each other kind of a joke i think something like that would be a good idea now if you decide just to do one thing like run or cycle i'd still like to you to, to use other cardiovascular conditioning during the week so three whole body workouts a week this one day we do something long slow obviously for anyone who's a a runner listening, they're going, he thinks a one mile treadmill is long. Well, no, it's not. But we were trying to do stuff like that in about an hour or an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. It was no, I barely remember. Well, actually, that's pretty close. The idea was we, we put it against a hard time. So if you're a crappy swimmer, 20 laps will take 
I mean, I guess it would take the hour. Uh, and so the idea was just to get better at all three. Uh, the other, so let's make that the Saturday. If you want to do a, a bagel, 10K bagel run or whenever they, when we get the free t-shirt and you, you know, raise money for something, that's fine too. Um, o over time, I think you also want to have one other sprinty kind of day, okay? I, I think there's no problem with having some, like at Utah State, our good distance runners would roll out of bed every day and run anywhere from five to seven miles. And to them, that was just to get, you know, as like me doing a, a bodybuilding workout. It was just to kind of wake you up. But, I mean, that ideally, you would probably have a cardio session every morning and this Olympic lifting or whatever whole body workout those three days a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, some kind of, some kind of conditioning, some kind of Olympic lifting, one long day, Saturday, and then one other day where you just work on more uh, high-end speed work, uh, whatever that would mean to you. Um, not everybody can go out and sprint, and not everybody can go out and cycle fast. Not everyone can go out and swim fast. But that would, that would be, for most people, reasonably what you can do. The reason I'm, I'm kind of exacting what I told you, um, this isn't the first time I've answered this question. It comes up a lot, especially like in the inner circle or in my one-on-one -on -one calls. A lot of people are trying to figure out that continuum. Now, I don't agree with what I'm about to say, but a lot of people draw a line and they put strength on this end and they put cardiovascular on this end. And this is being really, really, really strong. This is being really, really, really in cardio shape. And then you try to find places on the continuum. I don't, I don't think that's a, a very smart way of looking at this. Uh, the human body is much more nuanced than that. But I, I look back on certain times in my life, I would say the aughts, uh, I was in very good cardio shape and very strong. I would obviously go back to my high school and college years where I was, you know, I would, you know, but what did it for me back then, and this is an important thing to circle around as I, as I finish up here. When I was in high school in the fall, I played American football. In the winter, I wrestled. In the spring, I was a hurdler and a discus thrower. In the summer, I lifted weights, played church basketball, and played uh, soccer football. And that's what I did. And so I was constantly lifting weights and then playing sports. A lot of playing, a lot of playing. And then we played pickup basketball, pickup. So I was doing a lot of things. In Santiago, if there's anything, if you want to make this work, you're going to have to pull yourself in the idea that this is going to be a three to five year process. And you're going to have to put in a lot of time in the weight room and a lot of time on the field to play. But I think overall, uh, you'll be very happy you did it. Okay. Thank you. Good question.